Cobb Vision, and I'm going to always clear my throat like I always do. <coughs> I always have to do that because um, I'm generally sitting and blogging for an hour at least without speaking to anyone before I start my video broadcast. Now you know. Today's subject is Barack Obama and Jeremiah Wright. And this one is a tricky one. And it is a tricky one because there are all different kinds of folks with all different kinds of reasons to weigh in on the controversy. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the general perception that o Obama might be a fraud. And to keep what you should keep in mind if Obama is a fraud is that you can't cheat an honest man. And the reason why frauds are successful is because they promise things that seem too good to be true. And if you are one of those people that believe that Barack Obama's candidacy, or as his presidency, would unite the country across racial lines, then that is a promise that is too good to be true. The country is more or less united, but one man and one candidacy and one presidency is not going to erase the friction. You could change all the laws about race in this country, and it'll still take 20 years for people to get it in their heads that that's the way they should live. And that's what we have done. And Barack Obama is no Martin Luther King. And by the way, neither is Jeremiah Wright. But more on that for a moment. Back to the idea of fraud. An honest voter for Obama is not voting for him as a referendum on race in this country. If they're honest, they're not saying, I have to prove that we can get a black man in the White House. That is not a good reason to vote for Barack Obama. And then, consequently, an honest critic should also not say, well, this is going to be a referendum on race, and it's going to be a bad thing. That's why I shouldn't vote for Obama. You see? So as soon as you step into that, you're in trouble. And this is where the whole controversy about Jeremiah Wright is put in the completely wrong context. Okay? Because only for people who think Barack Obama should change race relationships in this country should this controversy matter at all. I don't think it does. And, and furthermore, I don't think Geraldine Ferraro matters either. So I put those two in the same comment on my blog, and I pretty much dismiss them. Uh, and that is because Geraldine Ferraro has been around here for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Jeremiah Wright and preachers like him have been around here for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Nothing either one of them is saying is new. So why does it all get attached to Obama? because there are people who are carrying secret agendas. They are not the honest people. They are people who are f falling for <coughs> excuse me, the quote-unquote fraud that Obama is perpetrating. If you just let him be the man who's running his candidate on policy for the White House, then you don't fall into these racial traps. But that's what happens when you get a black man in America who does something that people thought couldn't be done. And it would have happened with Colin Powell as well. Uh, and he thought better of it. <clears throat> I think it was selfish, but America's going to go through these trips one way or another, and somebody has to be the first black person to do it, and they're going to bear that burden. There's nothing, there's nothing they can do about that. Uh, but Obama is going to, as I predicted, shed Jeremiah Wright. He's just going to say he's going to dismiss him. He's going to do his sister soldier. Which leaves us with the question of, is Jeremiah Wright a patriot or not? Is he a racist or not? I think the appropriate context to look at that has nothing to do with Obama whatsoever. So, if, if you're still trying to pin those two guys together, forget it. Deal with Resco. That's, that's the controversy. That's the real thing. Um, <clears throat> the African American church is the African American church because it isn't the American church. And obviously there are going to be differences between churches. So why do blacks go to a black church? And why would an Afrocentric church emerge? And what is the context of the ministry of those churches? And what does that church know that other churches don't know? 
It's a theology question. It's a question of liturgy. That is to say, what does the service look like? What is the sermon in the context of the service? What do you expect to hear from a sermon? It's also a context of uh, theology. Why is the Baptist church different from the Episcopal church? And it is a question of race. Why is a black Baptist church different from a white Baptist church? That's the context in which a sermon from a black church should be evaluated. And what we don't have is a sermon from a black church. We have excerpts of fire and brimstone from parts of several sermons put into a collage and montage of hate. And of course, I would imagine that there is much to decry about those sentiments as they stand. Uh, but that is part and parcel of an institution that's been around as long as America has, the black church. So if people have real comments and real criticisms of the black church and the church's role in politics, then that's a different discussion. It detaches from Obama in the larger perspective of the world. So I am, I am, I am mocking all of you quote-unquote patriots and quote-unquote anti-racists who didn't know anything about Jeremiah Wright last week and didn't care, uh, like the NSA and the CIA and the FBI, you didn't connect the dots, you didn't see there was this great enemy over the horizon, you were doing nothing about it, you were not prepared, and all you can do is name call right now and try to blame Obama. So you're looking stupid. Uh, if you have a sophisticated uh, criticism of liberation theology, which is, I, I believe, that Jeremiah Wright Jeremiah Wright is part of a tradition of liberation theology, then you have to talk about James Cone, you have to talk about Cornell West, you have to talk about Bishop Stallings, and you have to talk about Martin Luther King. You have to talk about the major influences on black religious practices in America, because that's what this is about. It gets that deep. And there is a running criticism of America, a moral criticism of America, in the black church and it's unavoidable uh, and and there is no doubt as a spiritual advisor that Obama gets some of his moral fortitude on this and so if you really want to attack a moral question to Obama you have to ask him why he goes to church at all why he's a Christian instead of a Muslim okay those are not the kind of questions uh, that are being asked because nobody really wants to go that deep because I think None of the critics are really that deep. And they want to do it, well, okay, I knew he was a racist, or I knew he was unpatriotic, and, and, and these kind of knee-jerk reactions. They don't work. And we can see right through you. So, if you want to come with it, come with it, and come correct. This is Michael David Cobb Bowen for Cobb Vision. Not so easy, is it? Yeah.